Hi, my name is Uncompetitive and this video is called Uncompetitive Unboxes Stadia. There we go. Got a formed box. And then we've got a controller. And it's got microphone hole and a bigger hole for a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack <sighs> got what looks like some cables uh, USB C to um, USB A and this, which is the power, don't know what I'm supposed to do with this exactly. Um, I expect that goes into the um, I've got a manual here. Balance oh, this. Right, Stadia. What's that say? Um, going to read it before I get to read it. The promise of creating one place for all the ways we play is a long held dream. Today we are proud to see that dream start to become a reality. A community of players is the core of Stadia. Thank you for being the first to gather around the Stadia team. Let's pop that on the inside. <coughs> Stickers. Um, safety regulation information. Radio frequency exposure, disposal, all of that stuff, and then a get started, which is fan fold like that. And it says plug into power and TV. So I've got a plug the power cable into your Google Chromecast Ultra. All right. So we've got that and that needs to be peeled off, I think. Yeah. 
I don't know why it needs to have this plastic on it, considering it's inside of the box, but anyway. Anyway, well, it's got Velcro holding the uh, cabling together, that's kind of fancy. Not seen that before. I suppose it means it could be stay on there and then you can then travel with it, can't you? It's kind of a nice touch. I suppose what I should do is I should recoil it around that. Where's the where's it gonna grip again? Um Do that with it, and it stays on there permanently by the looks of things. You might be able to get it over the far end, but you'd have to go over that. It's always a pleasure unboxing new consoles, but I can't say I've ever done one standing up before. So, um, that looks like it's going to have that plugged into it. But I could be wrong. But it goes in, so I'm assuming that's correct. Don't know how well this is all coming out on camera. Right. Now what? Is there anything else in here? Oh yes. Okay. Oh, it's magnetic. Oh, it was magnetic. Hold on. Yep, magnetic. Oh. got a thing to peel off here and little G symbol there I think that's an HDMI input on the end of that and I think that goes into the TV and then this probably has that connected to it which would be, hmm, can't tell if it's got a way up. Oh, it doesn't look like it goes in. Okay. Oh, that's all the bits I've been given. Okay, let's we'll see what we can do with this. RTFM. Plug into power and to the TV. Well, that's supposed to be our power plug. You know what? I don't know if it's going to fit in a Oh, I see. God, look at that. That's now going to fit the earth terminal. Oh, look. That's good. I was wondering where that would be. That's the um, Ethernet port. I wanted to connect it to Ethernet. So this connects up to that end. 
connects into the Chromecast. Right. So I don't even know what this is for. And what's that do? I've got two plugs. Why do I have two plugs? There's one for charging the controller. Um, well, the one that's going to have the Ethernet to me connection and connects to the, the black one is going to be the, the Chromecast isn't it because it's all black and it fits so this one goes into here like that it's all got dust on it already um, well, that goes in the business end of the television that can be used wirelessly uh, but it would need power and if I want it cable, which I'm going to, I'll plug the cable in there and then that goes into the wall. And that's the whole affair. Like that. And I don't know, I think this other thing is for powering the um, controller. Which will be here. There you are. That all makes sense. Um, I don't think I need to charge the controller before I start though, do I? Can it be like Apple and actually just work straight out of the box? We'll see. Um, let's read the manual. Plug into power and TV. Plug the power cable into your Google Chromecast Ultra. Plug your Google Chromecast Ultra into the TV's HDMI port. Just about to do that. Plug the power adapter into a socket. Plug optional. Optional. Plug an Ethernet cable into the power adapter. This can be more reliable than Wi-Fi for some users. I'm going to give it the best opportunity there. Uh, switch to TV input. Uh, should be able to do that. Have I got my remote up here? Not sure about that. What have I done with my remote? Um, can I use my television as it is? I've got an AV set up, haven't I? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Right. Um, download the Google Home app from the Google Play Store or Apple App Store. Follow the steps and set up your Google Chromecast Ultra. Hmm. That's interesting. I didn't know I had to do all of that. Okay, well. That was what I was going to use um, as my tablet to, um, um, as I, uh, you know, for Google Stadia and all of that. But, um, I've got to update the operating system, so it's doing that now, and um, we will just connect the wires up at the moment. So we're going to be um, let's see what we've got on here. We've got some some entertainment on here. sound because I've got the sound selected in the wrong input. Sound built in speakers. So I recorded this the other day on this using this and it was connected to the braided cable that comes with it. And this is what I've been making do with since the 19th when I got my code. And um, this is like the most successful test that I've done. And there's no input latency. And um, 
it's it was playing off the Google um, Chrome browser, running on an iMac, and um, oh, the really tear too. And you, know, you get a, the old, old visual artifact, like the old tear line, but really hardly anything. Um, it ran across. It was about here, it was like a white line, very, very briefly, but it might not even be on this recording. Um, so I've got evidence of that. But the, I'm doing a screen recording. From, um, it was about where well, I jumped on the gondola. Let's see if I can see it. Yeah, I, it doesn't come through on this recording because I think this recording is 30 frames a second and the actual broadcast was 60, so it must have been on one of the other frames. So, um, the, the device is nearly installed the new update and I'll be able to get the applications it wants me to use but I think because I get this I get to use um, um, the Google Assistant do some um, password stuff with this, so.
So, um, I've got this working now. So this is that video uploaded. On there. So we've got, oh, what's it doing now? Something went wrong. There we are. We've got a sound for the video. So, a bit of a convoluted way of getting it uploaded, but what I had to do uh, was um, make a screen recording. You do that with QuickTime Player here, and you go into screen recording like that. And then what then happens is you get this here and that will show up the microphone because it's either got an internal microphone here or it has this thing which is my uh, Rode NT-USB microphone and you can select the microphone input on this drop down menu which is a little bit difficult to activate and it's there connected to the external microphone. It's actually hooked up to him right now. I mean, blah! Like that. So, um, there's that. And you can monitor it by turning that up, but you don't want to because you'll get echoes. And then when you press this, what then happens is you end up saying, click to record the full screen, drag from point to point to get past the screen. And um, end recording by clicking the stop button in the menu bar. So like that will be this button here, which is greyed out at the moment. But then that kind of little widget there, um, probably can't even see it. Um, that little widget, that sort of stop button inside of the circle. You press that and then it creates a window uh, with a quick time movie in it. And um, I had trouble uploading that to YouTube as it was, so I thought, okay, well, I'll verify my account so I can upload longer than 15 minutes, and it was already verified, and then I thought, okay, what else can I do, and I thought, I know, I'll, um, click that. We don't need to keep this, because I've taken this movie and I've finished working with it. And then this this movie I got imported into Final Cut Pro, which is this piece of software here. That's the icon here. And this is a £300 piece of video editing software. And then really all I'm just using it for is to just drag in the movie clip and put it on the timeline there. And um, there's the movie. I could have cut this up and rearranged it and skipped over parts where I died and stuff like that, but I was just too lazy. And then um, it can zoom in and out and you can kind of contract the whole video into different lengths and stuff. And you could mix it up with other footage like face cam footage and stuff like that. And then when you're done with it, you go over to the share, which is over here. and. Um, you click on that and you say I want to share it to YouTube and give it a title and everything. Um, but it will take time to transcode the uh, footage from the movie file that's here in the import section into the optimised form that it uses to edit and then out into the form that it then sends off to YouTube. And that is all going on in this thing which is um, going to show you your processes and um, when it's got processes going on it's like has little progress bars and um, it's I think it's just generally better to wait for it to transcode and then um, upload the video after it's transcoded it um, but I mean I don't know I've not been using this that long um, I've got my other videos on here there's my Jenny Nicholson video. Oh, this is the, the thing that does the transcoding and shows the progress of tasks. So, 
There's my Jenny Nicholson video, which I've just, what I've done there is I've been um, going around and I have, let's just change this, um, there we are. So we've got Mel Street here, and that's like as it would be, right? And then that's from her video. So this red bar here, vertical line, shows you where in the editing software the sequence is. And it's a sequence of Mamma Mia, and she spliced that in to make a point about Joker. And then you'll notice over this side, we have a colour board, and it's got exposure, saturation, and colour, and then there's the saturation, and there's the colour, and it's all on the line, it's all normal, okay? And then you go to Jenny Nicholson and you think, well, that looks perfectly normal. And then you realise, no, what's happening over here? You've got exposure and the highlights have been brought down and the uh, midtones have been brought down and the uh, shadows have been brought down. And then you go to saturation and saturation is all over the place with the highlights boosted and the um, mid-tones dragged down and the, uh, the uh, shadows brought up. And the reason I did all that was to make uh, compensate for the uh, camera that she'd been using where she's blowing out the image. I just thought it would be less distracting. Because I think it's fairly obvious that she's dressed up like Joker in the colours that the Joker used. She's not got the same colour uh, shirt as him. That's more the colour of the shirt. This thing on the bed here is more the colour of the shirt that she should have gone for. Um, but, you know, the idea was there. Um, she's dressed up as other characters in other video reviews. She was like wearing, I think, goggles when she was doing the Ready Player One um, critique and She's dressed up as Ray and as Luke, and all sorts of things on that channel. So, um, so basically, what I was going to do with this was I was going to, you know, um, make a bunch of edits uh, after I've colour corrected it because it's best to get the colour correction out of the way first. And then I was going to um, organise her points better and then cut out a lot of the chaff that is kind of like nitpicks and then it would give me uh, substantive points to respond to. And I was going to organise it into pros and cons. You know, so she had like all the things she said that she liked about the Joker and all the things she didn't like about the Joker. And then I was going to put in my own opinion on the whole thing and respond to it in that way. And that's how I wanted to go about doing it. So um, that's a little project that I've been working on. And the big project I've been working on is this and we're going to argue with this and put it to hand where is it Should be able to find this, hold on. We've only got two on the timeline here. Well, where's the rest of it? Do I click on that? And uh, yeah, I'll click on that. I think. Nope, still not working. Oh, well, that's good. What have I done with it? Right, open it. That's more like it. So here we've got Star Wars. And this is the thing I've been spending most of my time working on. 
and this is you can zoom out quite a long way we go up there, up there, up there that is our entire Skywalker saga and I'm going to be editing the whole thing and I'm going to get rid of Phantom Menace pretty much and I'm going to include Rogue One which is this film and then I'm going to uh, make it that episode one, that episode two, that episode three, because you've got Darth Vader in. I'm going to try and bring back as much of the. That's wrong. I need to bring back as much of the um, um, original footage of the original trilogy as possible. So a New Hope has got um, none of the foreground CGI monsters in it. Then they've got this one. So there's. Um, Empire Strikes Back, and then this one here is, um, let's see, um, oh, I've got to spot some bits happening on this. So we've got them on Endor, so that's Return of the Jedi, and then we get into this film, which I've got hardly any footage to pull, which is my episode 7, and then we've got this one, which is uh, episode 8, which introduces Ray. he's not in episode 7 at all, and then we've got this one, um, which is episode 9. Uh, which I've already got the rough cut for. So I've, what I've done is I've taken the footage from both films and I've then brought them out into um, being done. I don't know whether or not I've got this in a form I can edit yet. I mean, sh show off. I don't know how close I am to that. Um, let's see. I'll turn the sound off. So, um, so this is her, and she's going to be trying to get the lightsaber off him. A little bit later than that. Um, we'll do a skip ahead. Run it a bit faster, and it bonks on the back of her head, and then she's being shown the Oculus and the other ships being destroyed and he's gloating and then she gets hold of the lightsaber and she um, runs at him it doesn't go very well he's sort of essentially toying with her and then we get this scene where Kylo, I think, is um, tricking Snoke by thinking abstractly about the object of his murderous intent. So when Snoke is describing everything, any thought and feeling that he is seeing inside Kylo's mind, Kylo's actually thinking, I'm going to kill someone, I'm going to kill someone, and he doesn't realise it's Snoke rather than Ray. Um, We should be able to make this a bit bigger because we are um, dealing with this from all the way over here. So we're going to risk a copyright strike. There we are. And um, recolored. And then what's nice about the recoloring that you only get with Final Cut Pro, I mean, you might get it in Premiere, but you don't get it in iMovie. Uh, which is why I had to buy the program, is that you can just kind of sample a colour, like a blue, and then say make it green, and um, 
I had to colour match it with uh, Luke's lightsaber from Return of the Jedi that came out with white checkered green. And of course, it does everything. It does that, and it does, you know, shine on the armour, and it does the, the floor reflection. I don't have to go off and use motion to kind of drag a shape around it and capture it and make sure everything tracks. That would just be a nightmare. It does it all automatically. And it's enough of a reduced colour palette that um, there wasn't another blue in the scene that matched it. So that when I changed it to, um, um, I, changed it, I should be able to do that, yeah. Uh, when I changed it, I, I was able to do it. Now, I've yet to work on the edit. So here, I haven't coloured this yet. So this is like it before I did the colouring on this part of the scene. But all it would be is dropping in and saying, change that colour as I did before into a green one. That's all that I've done. But the whole thing with this guy with the, the double blades and the missing blade, um, well, it's not that guy, it's the next guy that she fights. Um, I have an idea of how to fix that. So this guy she fights, she swings the chain weapon off into the distance there. Do you see that? And I thought if I could change the direction that that goes in and have it hit this guy rather than hit the wall behind him, then he would be disarmed from one of the blades that you've got. And that might work. I'm not sure though. But the, what we'd have to do is you'd have to mask out the background. So you've got a footage of him approaching her and then You'd set that up in the middle of the other fight, show she was aware of this guy preparing to come in next, and then as she dealt with the chain weapon, she'd throw it off in his direction and then have that take out one of the blades that he split off like this, and then whichever one was the one he misses off out on, he's only got one to come at her with when they're actually having their fight, and then that means it doesn't look like it's missing from the edit. But really, a lot can be done with this just by speeding it up. And um, when Ivan Ortega did his uh, fan edit, he just sped up the scene. And that, that meant that it was like almost hard to tell that the, the blade was missing. Um, he also took away the uh, soundtrack and he put in Duel of the Fates, um, which is kind of a difficult thing to do, actually you've got to do kind of uh, audio cancellation on the whole thing. Now, you might be wondering, well, how come she's got Luke, Luke's lightsaber? Um, that will be in the previous film. That will be over here. And the scene would be... She goes to that toe. And... So she's on Jakku and then she goes to um, she gets some more uh, she's on Jakku, she meets um, um, meets Finn, they get aboard the Millennium Falcon, they're chased off the planet by the First Order and she goes directly to Crate, which is where Layer is, and then they put together the um, map, and then she leaves and she goes off to um, Acto. So that's supposed to be crate, which is like recolored tinted, so it looks like it's an ice world. Oh, no, it looks like it's a salt world. And then she gets to um, turn up here. flies in, uh, and I always thought this was a nice shot in the um, Force Awakens, but this is now part of The Last Jedi, and it now occurs in the middle of the film. So she started off in the desert, and then she goes here, rather than going to Takodana, and um, Luke's waiting for her. So I wanted to make it seem like she was 
climbing up a lot more steps. And um, because there's 600 steps carved into this crag of Skellig Michael. And um, you can see the figure there climbing up them. Time is elapsing. Pause it again. I should be doing enough to um, avoid copyright. It's not like you can watch the movie uh, this way. So there's a cut I did here. And I went to the sea. This doesn't happen in the film. And I've kind of shown times elapsing, the sun setting and stuff. And then that was like in the middle of the uh, ascending the staircase. And that made it seem as if the staircase was a lot longer. And then she has to climb through here, and then she has to go through the village, and then she has to go right up to the top of the island. And it all takes ages. And that's the whole point, because it's a big setup for a big reveal. And in the original film, it's a disappointing reveal. And in this, it isn't. So what we'll do is we'll risk having some audio but we'll wait until the music's not so prevalent. Done some colour correction on the sea there. Um, that's a bit blurry but I wanted to bring in the aerial shot a bit closer. If I had 4K footage it would be okay. So he's got his green lightsaber from Return of the Jedi and she hasn't got a lightsaber because she never went to Takadana to get one. And he hands over his green lightsaber and she's like a bit dumbfounded, kind of like, what's this all about? Puts it away in the bag. Lessons. Tomorrow. At dawn. So he walks off and he says, lessons tomorrow at dawn. And that, that sets up the rest of the film where she's like not actually wanting to be trained as a Jedi. And um, then you get to see later, I think I've done this yet, I'm not sure, but I think she goes off and she starts training with the lightsaber. And I might have done that the right colour, I'm not sure. No, I'm not, I must have missed it. Um, maybe it's not, maybe I haven't got around to it yet. Where is it? Um, I don't know whether she gets trained. I think it's further back. Oh, I haven't cut out the far side as I thought I had done. What? Um, the uh, 
let's total that with force and then oh, I must be missing some pretty really want to paint now well anyway there was a sequence in this where she was um, faxing with the lightsaber and I've coloured it green I don't know what's happened to it anyway I'm getting distracted so that's that's done it and then we need to get back to the video we're supposed to be making um, this it says here in the, where's the welcome guide here it says I need to go to the app store and download the Google Home app no that's wrong need a space So it's downloading that, downloading that from the store now, um, top, uh, top right, thought I'd show the whole process. While I'm waiting for that to download, I could um, plug in the um, Ethernet cable into this thing here. Um, I'll be doing that because it's over here. nearly finished actually. Seems to have stopped. Oh that's done it now. Oh right, so okay, yeah, that's what it says there. So it says set up new devices or add existing devices or services to your home. Google Home, Google Chromecast, smart displays, devices labeled made for Google, like smart bulbs or Hue Bluetooth. Okay. Well, um, what I think I'm going to do now because I'm basically finished. With working on the computer is going to let it go to sleep and I'm going to reposition the camera hopefully this will work and I'm going to shift this on another thing yeah it looks like it's going quite well so um That will be all right like that. I'm in the business of uh, moving at the moment, so that I've got things in boxes. You can now see me set this up.
HDMI input. Goes into the back of the television where uh, um, boom, 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 boom. Oh right, HDMI one. Okay. Got to be plugged in, but I'll do that after I've got my very long Ethernet cable. Goes in, that works fine. And I'll turn that off. So try not to trip over this. Yes, okay. Uh, 